Get down. And you too. That'll teach you to mess with me. Really, you, you did no harm to me. You were just there, and I had a bow, and I don't have a shortage of arrows because I have a wonderful... Actually. <laughs> oh, Lynx. Lynx. A maverick. He likes to hang his feet over lava. Actually, let's do that one more time. Yeah, there we go. He's a maverick, all right. He loves living the good life. <laughs> Roasting his feet. Anyway. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another Pal Play Skyward Sword. In the last episode, we we met a couple actually we we talked to three ma magmas last episode and they they were of varying helpfulness to us actually most of them were very helpful like we got a piece of heart out of one we got the dungeon map out of another we um learned that there was a secret room and we needed to know that or else we couldn't actually progress and yeah they've been very helpful for us so Kudos, Nintendo, for making NPCs that actually do cool stuff in Zelda. So, yeah, in this episode, I actually think that we might finish it off. Um, so, yeah, let's let's get started. Um, I mentioned last episode how this was where we needed to go in that hole, and that's where we're going to go. Now, the, the goal, I should explain this, the goal, and I'll grab my beetle for this. Okay, the goal... Just let me swing around. Okay, you can you see those dragon statues? We need to have them. Th this is basically a giant dam that we're on, and we need uh, these the statues to start releasing the lava in order to create a current, so that this uh, spiny fruit, which I could have bioed like 20 times, and yet I haven't yet, so that spiny fruit can move us along the lava river. So, let's go down, without further ado. Now, I don't think there are any enemies down here. I could be very wrong, and we're going to find out in a second. I can't hear any, so it seems fine. Now, there's stamina fruit in here, which we haven't seen stamina fruit in a cave like this before. So, you'd think there'd be enemies, but there actually aren't. Now, I see there's a bomb there. We can only push it one direction that we really can see. I mean, we could push it this way, but this is the only place that's helpful. Now, what we want to do is, that will release the lava flow, and what we need to do is crawl like crazy. We will die if this lava catches us. That is why the stamina fruit is here. You want to crawl as fast as you can, getting stamina fruit, and running for your life. I it might catch us, although I think we're in the clear. Yep, we're in the clear, barely. Climb out, Link. Climb. Whew, I've actually gotten killed on that before. Because that is pretty hard. If you miss, like, one turn, you're dead. So, we release the lava flow. So now we can continue on. And I don't see why this door is here. It's not like... This isn't an older Zelda game. The game doesn't need to load to go through this door. You know, if you look at it... Let me turn here. All of this stuff is already loaded, so I don't know why we needed a door there at all. I guess it's just Zelda tradition. I don't know. Anyway. Get off me. Oh, well, that that was very helpful to our cause. Yeah, we don't even need a jelly blob, so... Skip the cutscene. There we go. Now, this game is better than, um, I think I made a comment really early in this LP about how this game kind of stopped doing the thing that Toilet Princess did, and that was showing cutscenes every time you got a collectible. Now, or text boxes, mind you. Now, the game does do that, but in Toilet Princess, it's, it's much worse. In Toilet Princess, it will show you one of those text boxes every time you get a rupee that is not a green rupee. Seriously. Well, not every time. It's every time you load up the game, it'll show you a rupee that isn't a green one. Actually, I think it might show you a green one, too. It's just really stupid. I don't get it. Okay. 
What's up there? I don't know. This is obviously the boss door. And that's obviously a Bakoblin. That will kill. And he took like four hits, so... And he dropped a thing, so let's grab that. Okay, let's continue on. I don't need the text box or the cutscene or any of this. Okay, now let's go to the left first. Because I think that'll be better for us, unless this is locked. It looks like it's locked. Yes, it is, okay. So we have to go down um, the... We have to go to the pathway opposite that of the boss door. Oh, and I mentioned how there'd be a way for you to leave this dungeon easily. Here it is. I mentioned that last episode. You can go to the sky from here, which is really useful because this is a long dungeon. I mean, yes, the boss door is right there, but we have a little ways left. So if you want to leave before doing the boss, you can, which is really neat. The bridge of decision. Choose the path you believe in. Move forward bravely. Okay. And we'll see here that we have two statues. And yeah, we remember very early in this dungeon, they mentioned the fact that there will be two sleeping statues. The one that they mentioned something like the one that is asleep will grant you good fortune. So let's make, what did that say? Leap of faith. Let's go all Assassin's Creed up in up in here and uh, make a leap of faith. Was this the right decision? It was. We see a beautiful invisible platform. I mean, really, this isn't this is a very beautiful plat uh, beautiful surface. I wish this was in more places of the game because it just it's gorgeous. And we can't get, because it's so slippery, we can't get up it even by running. So, that's too bad. I want to get to the top of it so we can see it better. It's really beautiful. Oh, and actually, I have a feeling. Let's look real quick. Whoa. That's never happened before. That's really weird. I've never had it so where the beetle starts doing the warning bleep as soon as it leaves the, your wrist. That's cool. So, there's a goddess wall here. We don't need fairies. We don't really need anything. So, I'm going to get rupees because uh, we have a... I think we have a couple big purchases coming up. So, let's get rupees. There, there, and there. Sweet. So, um... I might as well mention, um, we have 19, well, we, I, have 19 subscribers now. Pretty neat. And that, my, my person-to-person -person ch chat with you is over because, and over quickly because we have a mini-boss battle. We have more Dark Lizalfos. I don't know why I pressed Fee. I don't know why I touched Fee. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm fine, I don't care. Thank you. A switch no I'm trying to do my switch targety thing while this guy is down let's go ahead and switch targets again hit ah he hit me okay he hit us but that's fine boom there we go you can lay next to your fallen brother. We took a little bit of damage, but I think we fought well. <laughs> Although... Oh! Oh, man. I think we we missed the tail. That's fine. We, I think we have a... Yeah, we have nine. Yeah, we, we had nine. It was fine. And they also dropped a lot of hearts, which is surprising because I don't have the heart metal equipped. So I don't know why they dropped that many hearts. Also, that's a drop right there. Uh, okay, so we unbarred the gate by killing them. This is another thing I've never addressed. I don't know why you can unbar how you can unbar unbar a door by dying. At least not in this 
this age, uh, technology-wise, I don't think you can do that. So anyway, we can act as if I just pressed the pause button before entering that that mini boss. I just pressed the play play button on our discussion. So I have 19 subscribers now. I'm happy. I didn't. Whoa. I didn't tell you before. Um, uh, but I started ep uh, monetizing my episodes around episode 25. You probably noticed because you know I have commercials on them. But I started monetizing my episodes around episode uh, uh, 25, as I said. And, yeah, so I'm making a little bit of money off this. Now, YouTube doesn't permit me to say how much, but, you know, I'm making a little bit of money off of it. Which is pretty pretty neat. It'll, it helps me. Your, your guys' view do, views do help me, so thank you. Not just in the, in the whole money department as well. Also, uh, I'm pressing the pause button on our discussion again. We can continue- oh, this is the staircase that we saw before, and we can continue up it, or we can go up to this patch of ivy. Uh, where is he? Okay, if he comes over here, I want to kill him. Ah, uh, come on. There we go. That's exactly what I want to do. Okay. Now that we're up on this this ivy patch, we can get, we can claw shot to another uh, ivy patch that is on a uh, an alcove that we never saw before. So inside, I believe, is actually the piece of heart that I mentioned before. No, it's not. Ah, I th I thought there was a another piece of heart in this dungeon, but I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing anything that would allude to it. So anyway, pressing play. So your guys' uh, views do help me. And I was I was saying um, it helps me more than just money-wise. And that is, you guys, you know, you're, you guys are good moral support, I guess I could say. You know, it's nice for me to, to start recording this knowing that people are actually watching. It's just really nice. It's something... I enjoy doing. I'm glad that people watch my content and enjoy it. I mean, I'm almost sounding like I'm wrapping up the LP, and in some of the things I, I say here, I should probably wait, but I'm glad that people are enjoying a clean LP, especially when that lp -er is very as new as I am. You know, I'm... I This is my first LP, I'm trying to say, and it's... It hasn't gone as swimmingly as I as I had hoped. Well, actually, it has, but as it hasn't gone as... What am I trying to say? An example of how I'm inexperienced at this. It hasn't gone as well as, like, you know, prof a professional LP -er in that, you know, they have been at this for a long time. But I think this, is, this LP has gone extremely well for someone who's just started out. Just my, my opinion. I think it's gone extremely well. And, you know, it just... I enjoy doing this, so, yeah. I don't know why I kind of got on a tangent like that, but... I don't know. It Something LPRs peers do from time to time. Also, I never noticed. Look in the background. Okay, look at the bir little bird statue that's there. Look when I target. It blurs them. It blurs the background. I didn't realize that before. That's a really cool touch. It's like a cinematic thing. Bring light to each statue in concordance with the number of wings each possesses, from least to most. When light resides in each statue, the king's treasure shall be yours. So, this is the treasure of which the Magma Tales speak of. We've, we discovered it when they were, ever, were never able to, so... After this, if we see Magma, we should tell them. So let's see, it's zero, then one, two, three, four. So diagonally up and diagonally up and right, down, and then up. Okay. Got it. We can also look above ground, I guess. So th there's that one. And then that's zero. This is one. 
two is we need a bomb for that one. And I can see there's a you can see there's an enemy in the upper right hand corner. Okay, that will not trigger the statue. I'm guessing that as soon as we hit all the switches, the enemy will be released, so. And this is through number two. It's the third one we're hitting, but it's the it's number two, wing wise. And we can just back into this one. That's four or three. And then we can hit the one with the Oh, they all have crowns, okay. We can hit the last one. The totem birds. And by doing so, we unlock the king's treasure. And we also lock ourselves in and unlock the beastie. Which I still don't know the name of. Come on. There we go. There we go. Hit him. Hit him. Okay. Come at me. There we go. Punch. This is going very well. Okay, I'm going to lure him over. Come on. Ah, he didn't look. There we go. And punch. Ah, I missed. Whoa. He's after us. And he ran into the wall. Even though he had plenty of warning and we can do him in. And that went very well. We used our heads and had some quick thinking, and it worked. So, we, the king's treasure, you, I'm, um, you know, this isn't spoiling it, it's, nah, I won't spoil it. Because I bet you guys can know, you guys know what it is, but I'm not going to spoil it for those who don't. You know, there's something that's in all the chests like this and it's always in these chests and we don't see anything else in these chests and that is the boss key you got the mysterious crystals this mass is made up of faintly glowing square crystals several pieces are missing and somehow it manages to stay together which is really impressive a king's treasure indeed something that defies well actually it'd be more like a scholar's treasure but something that defies all scientific understanding which you know i i like science it's probably like one of my favorite subjects not biology but uh, but other sciences like astronomy especially astronomy i love astronomy it's really really cool like i'm a big fan of all the astronomers although they all probably would have been not very personable people because all they did was like sit in their their apartments and think but I don't know I like the astronomers and I I don't know if you could call Albert Einstein an astronomer but you know he had his well I guess I would call him an astronomer he was just he was just more than just a, an astronomer so I don't know but I really like science so if I saw that treasure I would snatch it up because it's really neat so anyway, after talk, uh, talking about essentially just my interests, we can go inside the boss door. And also, I really love how this bo this lock looks. You know, all of the locks have been unique, and I think this is my favorite because it looks like castle ramparts with um the uh, battlements. It's just really, really neat. I love this design. In fact, real quick, because we have some time. In this episode, I want to praise whoever it is that designed this area. I'll I'll take out the beetle. Now, if if you don't want, if you just want to skip the boss, just skip to like 20 seconds ahead. But I I just want to praise this area. It's very beautiful. Let me do this again. It's just gorgeous. And whoever designed this, I want to see this type of design in Zelda game again. It's just very breathtaking, I think. It's vivid, you know, it has this kind of like Atlantis blue floor tiles, and it just, it's just beautiful. It has a nice contrast and color. So anyway, this is the, is it? I think this is the hardest boss key in the game. Yeah, this is the hardest boss key in the game. 
And you want to see how simple it is? Spin. Done. Now, these are these are really really easy, although they are really really fun, and I I like that it's different from just a normal key that you just press A and it's open. You actually have to think a little bit. And for someone who hasn't played this game, it is it is kind of hard. Also, prepare yourself for my favorite boss in the game. Oh, hello there, Link. I see you're still among the living. Fancy meeting you here. We seem to bump into each other time and time again. Oh, it's no coincidence, though, is it? You and I were bound by a thread of fate. Look at these old drawings. Until I found these, I was upset about that little stunt the goddess's guard dog pulled at the gate of time. What was that twig's name again? Impa? Well, never mind that, because these drawings suggest the, the existence of an, a second gate of time. This news has just filled my heart with rainbows. I've been a busy boy searching here and there and everywhere for another gate of time. And yet, I couldn't even find a single clue. Since I know that I can be honest with you, I'll admit that I got a little sulky. It was frowns all around. The thought of never getting my hands on that darling young girl again was, well, more than I could bear. But then, I found this place. The prospect of a second gate of time has made me positively giggly. That girl, your adorable friend, she'll be instrumental in bringing about the revival of my master. And though I feared she was now quite beyond my reach, I despair no longer. But... Before we talk any further on that subject, there's still the outstanding man matter of your punishment, Link. Do you remember when I what I uh, uh, do you remember when I told you that last time we met, I'd make your ears bleed from the sound of your own screams? Well, I've been thinking, perhaps corporal punishment is a touch harsh. I might be willing to forgive and forget if you if you'll strike a deal. All I ask is that you tell me where I can find the other gate of time. That is not too much to ask, is it? Oh, and don't you play coy with me. I know that you know, so why not let me in on the, on the fun? Such behavior. A mischievous boy like you needs to be dealt with firmly. I must warn you, I won't go easy on you this time. Lovely, aren't they? You'll find the supple skin of my arms tougher than any armor. Doesn't their shape just leave you breathless? Behold, such beauty, such pure form, such an, ex an exquisite physique, such stunning features. Yes, I've pretty much got it all, though there's one teensy tiny thing that I lack. Namely, mercy. Come to me, Link. You and I were bound by that thread of fate, destined to fight. So come close, Link. Meet me in battle, 
and the thread of fate that binds us will be soaked crimson with your blood. So, this is Gurham, Demon Lord Gurham. This is the second time we have fought him, and he just took me off guard just then. This is the second time we fought him, and I took me off guard again. And this boss fight is separated into two main phases. His sword grabby phase and another phase with... Wow, I can't shield dash those. Um, and another phase that I'll tell you in a second. Now, he will not try to steal your sword this time. This time, you'll see his... It'll be harder to take your sword out of his reach. And also, his... Um, and also his hand follows you better. And he'll try to hit you with those daggers instead of simply taking your sword. And it's... I'm actually having a legit hard time hitting him with my sword. Like, I just tried to fool him there and it didn't work. I'll try destroying his... His... Daggers. Why can't I hit him? Sheesh. I am trying hard. There we go. Got rid of one of his daggers. Reflect it back at him. I'm not sure if they actually do any damage, but you can reflect him back. That seemed to work. Got a couple good hits in. And I got hit again. Trying to synchronize my sword. And he'll spawn four this time. This what ow. This is what I was talking about earlier about his mini phases. Let's go ahead and shield bash one again. Just one more. Okay, that's fine. Get it out of his reach. And... Get out. Yeah, I'm actually having a hard time doing this, and I'm good at this game. At least I like to think I am. And I can't get it. I can't hit him. Let's fool him, and... See? I just can't get him. I'm not frustrated. It just... He's, re he's really good. There we go. That was a good way to fool him. Perfect. He thought that we were going to swing from the right, except we came around and swung him from the left. That didn't work. I was trying to fool him into thinking that we'd swing from the left because, you know, his daggers were protecting his right, but... He blocked that. Also, I, have, I didn't think I complimented this before, but Gurham is very strong. If you think about it, he he stopped spin attacks with his with two fingers. He's really strong. He's definitely not human. Now he'll draw two swords this time, and that old dash attack that where he overextended himself and allowed us to hit him is gone. He's going to be very patient. As you can see, he's not going to rush in. He's going to summon hit the daggers to fight for him, and hope to chip away at our health so that he can come in and wield the final blow. He'll also jump like that and come in from above, which is where he gets impatient and overextends himself. Come on. That worked. Let's go ahead and do some actual sword play here. Now he'll block, but he'll immediately counterattack which you can, you can, um, which you can dodge. So, he is much more powerful. Now, he'll summon these daggers, and they will hit you. They will all close in and hit you, so you have to use a corresponding sh shield, ta uh, spin attack. I tried to shield bash there. He's also really hard to shield bash because he moves so quickly. And there's little warning to his attacks, too. The least I can hope to do is throw out a couple good... good attacks and hope that they connect. I'm really just playing the same hit-and-run game that he tried to play the first ma first phase. Let's go ahead and try a Skyward Strike again. And that actually paid off really well because he, he rushed in. Really, our our entire battle against Gurham is always based off of his his um his impatience. It's kind of symbolic because he is a he is an impatient 
character. That is his, that is his fatal flaw. I believe he said it himself earlier. Here we go. And that's it. Kind of anticlimactic because there isn't an actual amount of times you have to hit him. But yeah. Enough of this foolishness. I am Gurahim, Demon Lord. It shouldn't matter how powerful your sword is. You are still nothing. Not just a human. A human child. And yet you prevail. You filthy scamp. You have awakened a rat that will burn on for eons. I swear to you, whatever it takes, I will drag you into an eternity of torment. <laughs> so Link has made a mortal enemy, sweet, that can live for eons. And we get a heart container. I don't know why we get... That's another thing, I don't understand why we got a heart container, but... Maybe it's because we got rid of the evil, so it's rewarding us. And we get our... It's really our 16th heart, but because we have the heart metal, it's our 17th. And I didn't get to use my guardian potion. I was planning to, but... Now, also, there are a couple... Se there are a few secrets in this room. Like... Uh, the... Gems. Okay, I'm not crazy. You shoot the gems, and they will give you rupees. Is it, are, is it these gems? No. That. No. Okay, actually, I think that you actually have to do it with the, uh, the Deku Seeds. But I know for a fact that you can get rupees from the gems in this room. We have no, we have no Deku Seeds, so we can't do it. So, we defe defeated Gurahim. Let's get our Sacred Flame. It's really coincidental that we both came here, but we both came here for different purposes. The first time we met him, you know, we came here to, f we both came here to get Zelda, but this time we came for different re reasons. Actually, I have, that reminded me of something that I'm going to talk about at the end of this LP, so yeah. Because at this point, we're over two thirds through the game. Now let's go ahead and get the last sword upgrade. The flames of Din has, have imbued your blade with the sacred white light that demons revile. And for yet the third time in this game, it now appears that Link has the full Triforce. Master, now that it has been tempered by the last of the Sacred Flames, your blade has, fi has finally revealed its true form. You now hold the Master Sword. With this sword's great power, you can awaken the gate of time within the sake within the sealed temple. I recommend you make your way to this location.
and we'll do that next episode. Thank you so, so much for watching, and next episode we'll go... Actually, are we going to go to the sealed grounds? Yeah, we're going to go to the sealed grounds. We're not going to go into Skyloft for the side quests just yet. So, or, I don't know. I'll, I'll do the episode however I want to do it. So, I'll see you guys then for another Pal Plays Skyward Sword. Where we got the new sword. Hooray for us. The Master Sword. Yeah.